Happy Thursday, everybody. Welcome to section 33 of Song of Myself. We're on page 181, and we're skipping ahead in Whitman's poem to a section that involves a lot of imagery, some of it a little graphic, which we're going to talk about in a minute. Before you watch this video, you should have already read the poem, so if you haven't done that yet, pause this video and read the poem first. Here we go. So, Whitman starts off this section with the line, I understand the large hearts of heroes. Much like the child's question in section six, the first line of this section informs how we read this poem. We're going to be hearing about heroes and the large hearts that drive them and the actions that come from their hearts. In the first chunk of this poem, we see repetition, just like we did in section six, but for a different reason. Whitman repeats the word how at the beginning of six lines. This technique is called anaphora. In this part of the poem, Whitman is writing about our first hero, a skipper. Whitman writes about his actions, how the, skippers, how the skipper saw the crowded and rudderless wreck of the steamship, how he knuckled tight and gave not back an inch, how he followed with them and tacked with them three days, how he saved the drifting company at last. And then he talks about the survivors that the skipper saw, the lank, loose-gowned women, how they looked when boated from the side of their prepared graves, how the silent, old-faced infants and the lifted sick and the sharp-lipped, unshaven men. Whitman is able to draw out the description of the steamship disaster and emphasize the difficulty of the task by using repetition, by repeatedly listing how the skipper did this and how the skipper did that. Whitman is only able to do this because of the free verse form. Because he doesn't have to worry about rhyme or rhythm, he gets to really paint a picture for us here. Whitman also uses a lot of words and phrases here that create a mood or atmosphere of tension and suspense, especially in lines 3 through 10. Question 1 on the next page asks, asks you to use, sorry, excuse me, asks you what some of those words and phrases are that create this mood and asks you to make an inference. Why does Whitman open this section of the poem with this particular account? Remember to view this entire poem through the lens of that first line, I understand the large hearts of heroes. How does this section and opening with it speak to Whitman's purpose in this line? In the next section, Whitman writes about a slave being beaten. We're skipping down to right here. Um, I am the hounded slave. So the reason that I had you read the PBS article about Whitman's relationship with race and slavery is because of this section. Whitman's attitude toward slavery was complex and inconsistent. He hated slavery, but he also wasn't an abolitionist, nor did he treat black people in his writing and in his life with any sort of equality. In this portion of the poem we're about to look at, Whitman takes on the perspective of a slave. He says, I am the hounded slave. I wince at the bite of the dogs. Is it fair for Whitman to write from a perspective he's never experienced? Is it fair for him to take on the pain and suffering of a slave when he himself has lived the privileged life of a Southern white man in the 1800s? I'm not gonna answer those questions for you. They're something you have to answer yourself, but they are something to consider as you read this portion of the poem. In this section, as Whitman describes a slave being beaten, he uses a lot of imagery. Remember that imagery isn't just what we can see, it's about all five of our senses, sight, sound, touch, taste, and smell. What are some of the images Whitman uses here? What senses does he focus on? And why would he focus on those particular senses? Whitman's purpose here is to describe heroes, to get readers to empathize with them. How does offering such vivid imagery of a slave being beaten further Whitman's purpose. On the next page, Whitman writes about a firefighter. Pay attention to the imagery here again because question two for this section is going to ask specifically about this portion of the poem. What details here appeal to the reader's senses? What effect does Whitman intend these details to have on his reader? And finally, Whitman takes on the perspective of an artilleryman in battle. He does some of the cataloging he did in section six, except this time he's trying to communicate something else, the confusion, violence, and horror of battle. He lists the noises of battle, the cries, curses, roar, the plaudits for well-aimed shots. He also describes a falling grenade and emphasizes the chaos that follows the explosion by cataloging again, 
the whiz of lamb's head stone wood iron high in the air this section of song of myself is really a testament to how powerful a tool imagery can be remember yesterday i said that poets like short story writers or novelists use many techniques to convey their theme or their message this poem and whitman's use of imagery and repetition are an example of those techniques in use and the two questions that you're going to answer today are going to focus on that imagery and its purpose and impact in this poem. So you're going to do the same thing that you've been doing and answer these two questions in the text box on page 182.